at some point I had to hold my head and tell myself, I'm gonna stop. If you don't stop, you're going to run mad. She has seven kids. She has seven. My mom used to say to me, six over seven is not a bad score. I mean, from the gates, I had noticed something was off. The only gun I can acquire is an illegal gun, and you know, that is a problem of one. Now, me, they arrange things in my house, so I know where everything they did. I know. I didn't used to notice how much noticeable being single was. It's Christmas morning, we have finished prayers. Let's call that our black sheep of the family, daughter. I go to the ice cream power bank. I don't find power bank. In the middle of the night, around like 10 p.m., I was struggling with the key. All through the sleep, I was just like, wait, am I running mad? Or did somebody actually come into my space? Because there's no sign of a breaking, except these small, small things that you can explain away in your head. This is your friend of mine. This is your friend of mine. This is your friend of mine. Mad the lesbian. 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 Watch out the screaming. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is your friend Amara. <laughs> Amara the lesbian. Yes, this is she. This is I. This is us. Amara. I am breaking out badly. I don't know if you guys can see it. I mean, you can see this really massive one here. So, my period is here. And if you're used to me, if you're, you've been here a while, if you've been on this channel a while, you know. Ugh, periods are not usually kind to me. It's a period I break out. It's a period I cry like a baby. I cry, yeah, yeah. It's a period where all my, you know, all the feelings I'm bur are buried or I've, I've not dealt proper, they come up to the surface and they just make me cry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what am I doing that? <laughs> Anyways, I called people here. I gathered this meeting here because. <laughs> It's been a while I did like a one-on-one -on -one and honestly I need a one-on-one -on -one this morning. I'm feeling I'm feeling a lot and a lot is changing for me. If you notice I'm in a different space. I got a space to move to. I finally moved some of my things. I've not moved from my house, from our house, Olain Kanai's house. I'm still there, it's just I moved a little bit of my things to this place. This is like a second location. It's very close to town, it's actually in town, <laughs> which is a very good thing. Now I can assess things easier. I can assess civilization easier. But that's not even why I moved. I mean, those of you that have been here a while, you know I've been wanting to move since like January, February this year. I've been wanting to move for so long. But something happened recently that made it like, okay, you you have to leave this space, which is the other space. So I got the space. How I got the space is a miracle, I'll tell you in this video. But yeah, I'm coming. My baby's testing me. Yeah, that's why I gathered the hair. I gathered the hair, so let's talk. It's Christmas season. Christmas was like, today is 27, so Christmas was like two days ago. It was my first Christmas completely alone, like completely physically alone i didn't reach out to my family or partake in their christmas celebration i didn't i didn't anything i didn't anything i didn't call i didn't test my mom my dad nobody called me or tested me i mean my younger sister and i just one sibling i'm in communication with one of my siblings so oh yeah my other sibling okay okay actually if i'm being honest two of my siblings reached out to me they both wanted to actually bring food to the house but i wasn't in the house i had moved some of my things to this place and they don't know this address so I didn't get food or Christmas food or anything I was completely alone my babe my partner Olainka Kabiesi <laughs> Kabiesi Kabiesi has left Nigeria like you all know so she wasn't here we spent Christmas video calling it was nice she had a Christmas tree in her apartment which kind of like you know, brought the Christmas spirits her way and also shared with me because nothing in my space was saying Christmas. In fact, if not because of like our union and the way we were sharing each other's life, I wouldn't have even felt like Christmas happened for me. I feel like I saw Christmas or I, I experienced Christmas through her eyes and through her. I mean, Christmas did happen for me in its own way, but like the Christmas excitement, the Christmas spirit, the Christmas jizz jazz didn't really hit me like that but like watching snow she was like she has snow in her side of the world 
she has a Christmas tree, she had like Secret Santa in her office. Those of you that work in office spaces, you probably know what Secret Santa is. So she had that. She had like Christmas office party. Just things that brought the Christmas spirit and she shared with me and I got to like feel the Christmas spirit from her life, which was cool, which was really nice. I actually did enjoy that. So in a way I felt really held and loved and together with her this period I didn't really feel alone but I felt physically alone I won't lie I felt very physically alone like the Christmas night I went out to have dinner alone and then my table was the only table that was a one-person table every other person was either a couple a family so in that moment I was just like yo this, this is actually a hard life for the physically single or the single I didn't used to notice how much noticeable being single was I didn't used to notice I used to always have like a person around me my partner usually is around me or a friend or a crowd or so this is like an interesting period of my life navigating life physically single i don't mind it i'm not complaining but i didn't notice some i didn't notice the difference i didn't notice even there are times when like on christmas day i was uninterested in feeling lonely i was just like nope i'm not interested in these feelings i don't feel lonely i feel good i'm all right but I felt hella lonely when I was just navigating like physical spaces, being in a restaurant and everybody was with somebody and I was just like, huh? <laughs> I'm the only one in a, in a table alone and my table was so huge, just like an eight person table or eight people table and it was just me. I was just like, huh? But anyway, I still chopped my food, I still drank my drink, I still had a good time. I blocked my ears, listened to music and we do, called my babe at towards the end they called me on video call so we both like you know talked and all of that which was really nice but all the same this christmas was heavy especially coming from like the family part of it because i had to like sit with myself and just at first i had to decide do i want to test my mom do i want to test my family for happy christmas or not then i made the decision not to test her and that was a very heavy decision even though the previous day my sister had hit me up saying you make sure you test your mother for christmas and i was like okay i'll do that but christmas day came and it was pretty hard and i don't think anybody realizes how hard i feel like from my family point of view they realize they realize how hard this this strain this 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 thing going on to my mom and i is for me like everybody is focusing on like yeah it's hard on my mother it's hard on my mother it's hard on her like you test her for christmas test her for her birthday test her for this but this person is <laughs> this person and i don't talk i don't visit her house i don't we're not in communication but christmas is here and i'm supposed to test because it's christmas right but she has seven kids she has seven my mom used to say to me six over seven is not a bad score like she'll say to me on days where she's like yeah you're such a disgrace like and before God and man, six over seven is not a bad score. So if I count you out, I still have six kids. My mom has said these words to me. So on days like that, on days like Christmas Day, I'll be in pain. I'll just be telling myself, you know what? And this is why I said to myself, Omo, six over seven is not a bad score. I'll, 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 at least she'll get six people tell her happy Christmas, Merry Christmas. But <laughs> nobody's saying Merry Christmas. I just have one mother. I have one. She has seven kids. I have one mother and if I don't get that relationship, that interaction from that one mother, I'm not getting from anywhere else, right? So it was pretty hard. I decided not to test her, not because I was trying to I needed to be sh I needed to be my feelings. I didn't I didn't want to confuse myself. I didn't want to confuse my feelings because it was Christmas Day. Our relationship is hard. Right now it's struggling. This basically no relationship right now right now the thing tying me and my mother is the fact that she bettered me right it's not it's not a willing conscious acceptance and you know every day it's like this one bettered me so yeah i'm her property but the relationship we don't necessarily have like a, an interaction a relationship going on so it felt really heavy and weird for me to like reach out to her like what do i say like that day i honestly wanted to even her birthday was like two weeks before christmas and between you and me honestly i didn't test my mom for her birthday because what do i want to say what do i want to say i never know what to say so i decided not to say anything i didn't want to confuse my feelings i didn't want to confuse her we are struggling our relationship is struggling right now until we both reach a place where we can have the conversation we can both heal we can both hold ourselves and look at ourselves in the eye and 
be in each other's life i don't think there's a need to constantly be annoying our emotions be upsetting ourselves because conversations between us are hard you probably have seen a preview in one of my videos like three four videos down we might just be conversing about this and small witch here we we'll talk about god we'll talk about christianity we'll talk about my hair we'll talk about this and we'll start fighting or we'll start making each other upset she'll probably go to her room and cry me i'll go to my house and cry so i i didn't want any i didn't want her to be upset on her birthday i also did not want to be upset on her bed like i just feel like it's easier to stay away because at least we are both not upsetting each other do you understand so yeah christmas was very hard actually for me thinking about it family way this is the first 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 not best <laughs> this is the first christmas in 27 years that i've been on this earth this is the first christmas that's nothing 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 it was like it wasn't like christmas i was just on my own i was just on my own like i was just on my own even even like a okay you know what it's christmas morning we have finished prayers let's call that our black sheep of the family daughter and tell her that she's part of this family one way or the other i didn't get that and that would have been nice i'm not even i'm not trying to say that there's something that my family should be doing or my biological family should be doing that they are not doing right now i feel like everybody protecting themselves is best it's it's great it's just I know that would have been nice, right? To get like a call. I know they do a family prayer. They all gather and pray every morning. That been nice. Like, oh, yeah. We just wanted to call you and say happy Christmas. We know things are difficult, but this is everybody saying happy Christmas because you're still a part of this family. A huge part of the emotional work that is required to be in each other's life is usually left to me to do, and I don't want to do it. I'm tired. I'm tired, and I'm tired most times. Every time, every day. If you know me. If you know me personally, you know I'm tired half of the time. I'm drained physically. I'm even if I'm physically energetic, mentally I'm drained. I'm 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 dangling in this rope of depression. One day I'm here, one day I'm here, one day I'm here. I'm I'm tired. Oh no, I just need to be focusing my life resources, my breath, my air, my everything in making sure I'm fine. I can breathe. I'm well, I'm fed, I'm baited, I've done, like, honestly, I'm trying to focus on taking care of myself. So, doing some kind of heavy lifting in the name of being in my family's life, in the name of having family, is not something I'm interested in doing right now. So, yeah, I didn't call, I didn't communicate, I didn't do anything, I just stayed on my own for Christmas. And, you know, I did not get Christmas food. <laughs> I don't chop any Christmas food. Although I took myself out and I was reminded of how lonely I was, but let's not talk about that. So, why am I here? Where am I? Why did I move? I mean, I don't even need to give a why did I move. People know I've been wanting to move for the longest. But why did I why am I moving right now though? I was robbed. Yes, yes. For those of you that follow me on Instagram, you probably know I traveled to Lagos a few weeks ago. A few, yeah. It was like two weeks ago so i went to lagos and i locked up my space in abuja the space you know i used to share with my partner the space i own i could own my partner or lion car i locked it up i traveled i went to lagos spent a few days there came back to abuja and i mean from the gates i had noticed something was off right the key refused to open i had i struggled with my key for a very long time i had to drop all my bags and like and be trying, be trying. In the middle of the night, around like 10 p.m., I was struggling with the key. When it finally opened, I was, I was thinking, ah, maybe it's Hamatan, right? Because the air is dry. I opened the gate. I tried to close it back. The gate looks like it had expanded, so it couldn't. The door couldn't fit, right? Just a lot of little, 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 little things were happening. I finally was able to close the gate, and I got to the main door. Opened the main door. Okay. Now, the key of the main door, because the house is located in the, inside a gated compound, a fenced compound, right? The key of the main door, I normally hide it somewhere in the compound, right? Then I take the key of the gate, because I don't like holding both keys. I have this, I'm a very careless person. I mean, I used to be a very careless person. I'm getting better. My babe made me a survival kit that I wear in my neck to put all of my valuables. So because of my history with carelessness, 
I don't trust myself to take both keys out. So I take just the key of the gate out, right? I used to, now I take both keys. I used to take just the key of the gate and I'll hide the key of the main house in the compound, right? My own ideology is I lock the gates. The gate is fenced and barbed wired so nobody would jump inside and see the key, right? But I got there, I came back that night, the key was where I used to keep it. I carried the key, I opened the main door, I entered, I entered the house. And everything was normal, everything seemed chill, everything seemed normal. And then small, small thing, okay, I came back that night, I was very stressed. <laughs> Let me tell you the whole story. So I went to Lagos for like a week or so and I was stressed, very stressed. I was so stressed in Lagos. I came back, my body was stressed, I was tired. I was just like, you know what, let me just masturbate and sleep. Like, I know once I get it out, once I come, come severally, I'll be able to like wear my body out and sleep a good night's sleep, right? Then I stood up to look for my vibrator or my um, sex toy and I couldn't find it. I looked and looked and looked. I didn't find it. To not make myself crazy, I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna leave it. Wash your hand. <laughs> use go the hand way which i did right because i didn't want to stress my mind and be looking for a vibrator in the middle of the night i did that i was like okay i'll look for it in the morning maybe maybe but i know where i used to keep that thing it has just one position i don't used to move it from there in fact i've had other vibrators or other sex toys that used to be in that position every time i shift you or i take you away the new one is now in that position do you get so it wasn't there the next morning i slept i woke up i looked for it it wasn't there then I said, okay, no problem. Okay, then before I started looking for it, I woke up in the morning. If you're on my Instagram list, you know, I like playing music in the morning. I like dancing and gluting and all of that. So I started looking for my speaker, Omo, to play music. I couldn't find my speaker. I looked and I looked and I looked. At some point, I was like, okay, no problem. You know what, I'm gonna let this go. Maybe it's somewhere, maybe it's on. Cause I was like almost running mad in my head. And I, then my battery was running low. And there was no light so i was like okay let me just plug my phone i didn't travel with my power bank so i was like okay power bank where are you put my hand everything in my house has a position now me they arrange things in my house so i know where everything they did i know i go to the ice cream power bank i don't find power bank that is when i was just like okay you know what <laughs> too many things are missing i can't i can't ignore it so i'm not consciously trying to check everything that is missing in the house my phone tripod i couldn't find that like different things were just missing like small small electronics the major electronics like tv ps4 they were all there the fridge ac everything was intact just the small 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 things were missing <sighs> you guys i thought i was going crazy there was no sign of it breaking except the small small things i had mentioned it, like the gates and all of that there was no sign of it breaking right so i thought it was just in my head and I was going crazy for hours. At some point, I had to hold my head and tell myself, I'm gonna stop. If you don't stop, you're going to run mad. I... What did it remain for me now to carry the house upside down, shake calm. I carried everything to one side. I was just like, you know what, everything, just so I can search every inch of the house. All I kept on finding were more things that were missing. I didn't find anything that was missing. I didn't. <laughs> So I had to accept that my house was, you know, somebody was in the house. Then in the night, I was just like, you know what? I've spent all day searching. My head is going crazy. I don't think I can sleep here. So I hit up a friend of a friend. So I asked her if I could come and crash in her couch for the night. And she was like, yeah, sure, come. So I went to this person's house and I crashed in her house that night. All through the sleep, I was just like, wait, am I running mad? Or did somebody actually come into my space? Cause there's no sign of a breaking except these small small things that you can explain away in your head. Um, uh, that is how I went back to my house the next day. I was just like, okay, when I go back, I'll start again with the fresh eyes. Because I did not want to believe that somebody was in that space, was in that house. That would mean I couldn't sleep there. That would mean it was hella unsafe. Um, I went back the next day. I tried. I searched again. I searched some more. I didn't find this, those things. I searched. Okay, that night I didn't want to go anywhere. I was like, okay, let me sleep there. Let me just try and sleep there. Whew. Sleep I could not find. I kept having flashes of, you know, someone coming inside the night, someone doing this, some men barging into the house, some people jumping. In. Like, I'll close my eyes and I'll just be like, okay, what if someone does this? Okay, what if someone does this? At some point, I even start getting myself ready. 
just in case somebody comes here and they try to rape me. Like, the things I was mentally preparing for was mad. It was mad. I felt so unsafe. I've been feeling unsafe in the house for months. But like, we had done all these things to help with the safety, you know, the wires, the barbed wires, the fence are high. Even after online car left, I was hella terrified of staying there alone. But I was just telling myself, you know, there, there's there are vigilante guys there, old soldier is there, this one is there, you have bottles. At some point I said thinking of buying a gun. I, I called this soldier guy that I used to talk with and he was like, oh no, you cannot own a gun as a civilian. Civilians are not allowed to own guns in Nigeria. So like I tried acquiring a gun and if I was to go ahead with a plan, the only gun I can acquire is an illegal gun and you know that is the problem of this one. And then do I even want to be a gun owner? These were th these are things I've been thinking about for the past few months just to feel safe in my own home. Because I'm a queer person living in Nigeria. This is a home that my babe and I, my partner and I, we bought the land ourselves. Every single block in that house, we bought ourselves. <laughs> Everything we built ourselves. The land is ours. And I don't even feel safe to sleep in it. Because I'm a queer person that lives in Nigeria. Okay now. So fast forward December. After all of these things happened, after everything, I just decided, you know what? I can't be here. I can't be here. I cannot be here. Luckily for me, I have this friend in the abroad in the UK. She has a sister in Nigeria. That one she has just been like, you talk to my sister. My sister has a space in her house. She can let you have it. Talk to my sister. I'm sure you're not going to pay for much. You'll probably just pay for the bills. You... <sighs> After going back from Lagos and everything that had happened, I had to call the sister. So I was like, yeah, yeah, the space is still available if you want it, blah, blah, blah. And that's the space. I was just like, yes, please. I want it. I want it right now. So yes, that is why I moved. That's how I moved. I'm still actually in the process of moving. I just brought a bag, this bag. I just packed a few things and put in this bag and I came here. So I've been here for like, I've been here since 24th night. Yeah, since Christmas Eve. Actually just three days. This is my third night here, my third day here. So yes, that is why I moved. That is why I'm here. I'm still moving my things. I'm not fully here. The place is still empty. I don't necessarily want to move or pack things from that environment because it's our land, it's our house. It's not like we can abandon it and run away. So what we want to do is just, you know, make it safer. Not right now because I need to, I need to, I need to get into a life, a routine that will help what I'm trying to do, that will help my life. So trying to invest in that land, that location right now is not necessarily going to pay me or pay my babe. So we're not really doing that. But what we're going to do is we're going to change the locks and all of that just to make sure it's safer. The location is not necessarily safe because like I've said before, it's not a gated estate or an environment or anything like that. Although there are vigilante guys, there's a, there's a police station not too far and all of that. We are still living in Nigeria. I know now rural areas are target places for violence, for crimes, for hate and all of that. So we don't necessarily want to spend a lot of money in that place right now. Like we don't we don't have any grand thing we want to do there right now except change the locks, make it safer for you know, me to visit, that's our house, I'll still visit there, I'll still go and sleep there on some nights, I'll still work there, I'll still exist there, I just have another location right now, closer to town, where I can assess things, assess work, assess people, people can assess me, and I can sleep better, I am sleeping better, yo, the three nights or two nights, the first night I didn't sleep here, the two nights I slept here, I've slept here, Oof, even though it's so cold because I didn't carry a, a blanket, so I'm here sleeping without my blanket. <laughs> even though it's so cold, I'm still sleeping better. I'm, sleep I'm sleeping. I'm still sleeping. I'm sleeping. So I was supposed to go out today and buy a blanket because I don't want to move a lot of things from that house. Everything there is very sentimental. The blanket, the blanket in that house has been with me since my university days. That's like my childhood blanket. <laughs> Honestly, it has been with me for such a long time. I love it. It should stay in my house, that house, the house I own with my partner. I should stay there. 
I want a blanket that can travel with me everywhere. So that's the one I'm going to go and buy for this space. A traveling blanket. So. <laughs> Anyways, I'm fine. I'm good. I just... I found myself processing so much this morning. This morning I was just like, yo, Amara, Amara. You need to slow things down in your head. If not, if you run mad. So I said, like, pick up my camera. Dump some of the things with you. I don't hold on to things. I don't have a therapist. I, I'm not in therapy right now. It's one of the things I want to do next year. Next year, I want to, I want to see a therapist. At least have my very first therapy session. In case anybody here wants to sponsor that, hit your girl up because <laughs> as much as I have money, <laughs> as, much as, as much as I have money to get by, I don't think I have money for therapy sessions. And they are so expensive. The ones I inquired about is like 45k per session. So, yeah, in case anybody wants to sponsor my therapy sessions, hit me up. Thank you very much. I'm still not feeling settled, actually. I still don't feel like I'm settled. I'm going to, I'm, of course, I'm not going to settle in this environment, in this space. This place is going to be for a few months. After that, I'll decide. Before that, not after that, before my tenure here comes to an end, I'll have a definite plan and direction on what I'm doing, where I'm moving to. I was actually planning to leave Abuja before. I was planning to go to one state in the east. But Omo, hmm, that plan went south. It went kaput. I had friends looking for apartments for me. I was researching about the state, about how to move around, transportation, crime rates, queer people existence. And I had someone who called me and just like, yo, just let me just give you my piece of advice. If you want to be a queer person, you know, you know, filming and sharing your life, please don't come here. That's just what she said. She was like, you know what? If you want to be, if you want to move here, I think you should think about the vlogging part of your life because that is actually what exposes you. I know that. I know that. I'm a queer person who is sharing her life in Nigeria. It's, it's unsafe to be a queer person in Nigeria. It's, it's, then to be a queer person who is now sharing your queerness in Nigeria. <laughs> Anyways, that is the fight. That is the that is the fight. I'm sharing to make change. I'm sharing to disrupt this this homophobic system that we have that is killing homosexuals and you know heterosexuals want to act like oh it's nothing you can keep quiet about it well your system is killing me this system that favors you that allows you to get married that allows you to walk around the street holding your boyfriend your girlfriend your wife your husband that system is killing me if i'm walking down the street with my own partner with my own lover with my own anybody when i see a police station a policeman a police anything i leave their hand even without seeing police anything, I'm very conscious of holding their hand. So <laughs> the system is killing me. So for those of you asking, for those of you saying, oh, you know this thing is making your life difficult, it's putting your life in danger, why are you still sharing? That is why I'm sharing. Because we need we need change, guy. <laughs> we need a Buhari. <laughs> okay, not a Buhari. But we need change. <laughs> we do need change. We need change. We can't be living in a system that kills a group of people. And you know, you all want to act like, it's not there like this is not a problem look at me I have a land I have a house I have fenced compound and I cannot live there I cannot sleep there because I'm a queer person in Nigeria that needs to change this is why I'm doing this that is why I'm doing this we need change we need change we need change so this is me in my scapegoatism <laughs> this is me in my scapegoatism and yeah, and I hope, and I really, I really, really hope and pray that in the next 5 years, in the next 10 years, in the next 15 years, in the next 20 years, that the effect of this thing we are doing right now will come into effect, in full effect, that, you know, queer people, young queer people, old queer people, living queer people, every queer person can be living in this country, in their houses, in their spaces, and they will be able to sleep. They will, they will to walk down the street with their partner and hold their hand. Honestly, that's my prayer, that's my hope. That all of this we are doing would, you know, change change this world for the better. So let's keep let's keep doing it. Alright? So yeah, I gathered you here today because I just wanted to share and offload because too much is on my heart. <laughs> Too much today, my heart, and you know they heavy me, guy. Make me not hold some for me. 
So yes, how has your own Christmas celebration been? In the comment section down below. In the comment section down below, tell me how was your Christmas celebration? How was your Christmas Eve, your Boxing Day? How is the holidays going? What are you doing? What did you do? Share, share, share with me. All right. I really hope and pray that the year we're going into is going to be a beautiful one. Year 2022. <laughs> a year that has three twos and one zero so it's going to be zero eh? no no no. <laughs> no 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 it's not going to be zero 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 it's going to be double 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 everything this new year we're entering double 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 because we've experienced zero we have experienced the zero now <laughs> double 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 bank account bank allowance double Surprises, double. Promotion, double. Dancing, double. Chopping, na double. Money, na double. <laughs> Corona, COVID, zero. <laughs> COVID, please, come and be going. You've had your time. Let us enjoy the double of our life. COVID has zeroed us out. Please, come and be going. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Our uh, end word, yes, let's do an end word. We've not been doing end word for a very long time. Oh, by the way, this is the end of this video. <laughs> In case you've not noticed, this is the end. Hmm. What's going to be our end word? Our end word for today's video is going to be Merry Christmas. Should we do Merry Christmas? Yes, please, please, let's bring the Christmas spirit and pour it on the comment section down below. I know you didn't see me on Christmas Day, even people on my IG, you didn't get a Christmas shout, shout out, um, greeting from me and i'm sorry about that but i'm here now so bring the christmas spirit the one that's remaining bring it here sprinkle it on the comment section down below type merry christmas if you got to this part of the video if you love me if you like my face <laughs> if you like anything anyone type merry christmas the person doesn't even have to be here but if you like a person and the sweetness of liking a person is holding your chest then pour some of that sweetness in the comment section down below type merry christmas right i love you from me to you this is your friend amara <laughs> amara the lesbian <sighs> wait till you worry me guy wait till wait. this is your friend amara shasha <laughs> amara the lesbian and from me to you my beautiful person Bye, thank you for being here and processing with me. Bye.